Hey guys, my name's Ollie Mitchell and I'm giving you my day in the life of from my bedroom because, well, you know, I'm here because of coronavirus, but also because this is my office, because I'm a freelancer. Um, I don't have a job title per se, um, but my role is really working with brands and charities to help them make a positive impact in the world. So as you guys are all very much aware, there's a lot of problems in the world that need tackling. Um, we're seeing a lot of uh, movements start to happen uh, in recent times. You know, we're, we're facing a lot of challenges in the world, both social and environmental. And my job is to work with brands and charities who want to make a positive difference. They want to actually help make the world a better place. Um, and from a charity, that's very easy to understand because charities, obviously, they're built on trying to improve the world in some way. Um, from a brand's perspective, it's becoming more and more important now for brands to uh, be helping to tackle some of these issues in the world. And it's you as a consumer, someone who buys, goes out and buys things in the world. You probably expect brands to, you know, be doing their bit to be sustainable and to be, you know, looking after their employees, to be making sure that they're actually doing good in the world. And you might even find yourself actually favouring brands where you perceive them as doing more good. You might actually favour them over brands that you perhaps perceive as doing less good in the world, um, which is why it's becoming so important. And my role is to work with brands to make sure that they are, when they're deciding to tackle a problem in the world, it is they're doing it in a really credible and authentic way. Um, and they're not just picking something to make uh, you know make a headline about it and, and to not actually have any impact behind what they say. I really help them make sure that they're putting, <coughs> excuse me, the meaning behind uh, their words. And I'll work with them on how they can shape their brand and their marketing so that they can effectively communicate this change as well to people. So they can tell everyone like us out in the real world um, about the good that they're doing. And in turn, they might want to actually, you know, get people involved and, and, and get more people uh, kind of not just buying their product, but actually helping them do good in the world. So a good example would be uh, Corona, who are the beer brand, which some of you may have heard of. They've done a lot of work with beach cleanups recently, trying to clear the plastic from our oceans. And they did a, a big um, a big kind of messaging uh, piece all about protecting paradise. And then they encouraged their audience to actually get involved with the beach cleanups um, to to help protect the planet and protect the environment. And, you know, that's that's really what my role is, is to try and help create good in the world. And I really don't actually, the, the, the way I got here is quite, quite strange. Um, I started, um, I went through into university and studied economics and philosophy, which is absolutely nothing to do with what I do now. So don't worry if you feel like your higher education or your degree is, feels irrelevant because for most people it does become irrelevant. <laughs> um, they're really important to help you build skills and in, um, you know, well, many skills really that you learn through education and through university. But in terms of the actual knowledge you learn, um, you know, not many people actually then end up applying that in their jobs. So don't worry too much if you kind of have, have left education and suddenly like, well, I don't know where to, what to do with that degree because all you need to do is go on your journey and and find your own way and go and try things that feel like they they resonate with you and then. If they don't work out, you can try other things and um, yeah, you can go and explore the world. And that's very much what I did. I came out of uni university with an economics and philosophy degree. Didn't quite know what I wanted to do. I worked for a brief period of time at Tesco head office, but that didn't really didn't really do it for me. I wanted to be doing something more in line with my passions and my interests. So I then started exploring the sports world and the world of sports marketing and that's really how I got to where I am today with my first entry into the marketing world and understanding how sports brands and uh, how they position themselves and, and kind of how sport is used as a way to, um, to communicate to people and I just basically tried to speak to everyone who I possibly could 
um, in, who I knew was in that space. And what you find that's quite interesting is that once you find someone, whether it be for a friend of a friend or a family friend or even just Googling different companies and then like Googling their employees and then like sending emails out to different people there. As soon as you find one person who's in that area, like, and you get them for a coffee, and most people people are very willing to go and have a coffee in like this current time, it might be a Zoom coffee. Um, but people are very willing to give a short amount of their time to uh, young people who are looking to get into an industry and who are interested. So just reach out to people and go and explore what's out there. And then as you talk to them, you can get a bit of an understanding of actually what is involved in, in that sector and what is involved in their job. It gives you a much deeper flavour talking to them than you would ever get from just kind of searching what that job title was. So that's how I started really. I just, I just, you know, I got introduced to a couple of people and then I just Googled a lot of people and just emailed loads of people at different organisations in the world of sport and asked to speak to them. I spoke to Arsenal Football Club at one point. I spoke to um, IMG, who are a massive kind of media, uh, sports media uh, company. And those were all just through random emails just that I was sending out. And through that, I got a really good understanding of the sport sports marketing industry and those people then when you meet them they you know if you build up a bit of a report have a nice chat with them and um, then you can always ask them is there anywhere one else you'd recommend speaking to they then introduce you to say three more people suddenly you've got a load of people you can be talking to and you know maybe one of those people knows of a vacancy that would be suitable for you so that's 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 how I then found myself doing an internship at a small sports marketing agency um, in Hertfordshire, which then I uh, used, I kind of used that experience to apply for an internship at um, a global sports, uh, well, a global PR agency called Hill and Knowlton, who are based in London. Um, and I went into specifically work in their sports team. I started working on their, the Rugby World Cup account there and doing all of their communications, how we were getting the volunteers involved around the Rugby World Cup and how we were trying to kind of use media um, and newspaper and television and all of those things to try and sell as many tickets to the World Cup as possible. Uh, I also did some work with Western Union, the bank on their um, Europa League campaign, so that's, that's in the European football tournament. And I also did some work with Gillette and Gillette are involved in a few different sports and I worked with them on and how they could um, use the media to kind of tell the story of how they're involved in sport as well and, and using, using that to try and help, uh, help them kind of get their brand out there into the world and, and to get it in front of people using sport as that vehicle to, to talk to people. And uh, really from there I then uh, found myself offered a role at Chelsea Football Club, which was quite interesting. I've always been a football fan and um, I thought it would be my dream to work at a football club. Uh, it wasn't in the end, which was interesting, which also is a good lesson because sometimes you can think one thing is going to be your dream job and then you get there and you realise, actually, no, maybe not quite right. Let's try something new. So, you know, your career, much like life, is just going through learning and trying new things don't don't get too caught up on an end kind of goal enjoy the journey like just just go through and try different things and yeah I went to Chelsea and I, I had you know I had a fun couple of seasons where I worked out I was working with some superstars and um, who were in the team at the time and I was working their their commercial team so I was helping connect all the brands that work with the club such as well it's Nike now so I'd work with like the marketing team at Nike and give them the access to the Chelsea players that they needed. Um, and that's probably when my most memorable career moment came because I was just at one point was just chatting to Eden Hazard, who for those of you who aren't football fans, he's one of the biggest football players in the world, probably. I just found myself chatting to him and as a football fan, I was just like, had to blink and just be like whoa okay this is this is pretty intense but maintained my professional nature and uh yeah and uh did, did the job and helped um helped him he's doing a filming shoot for for a deodorant brand um sure you've probably heard of 
And anyway, the, the two years at Chelsea were a learning curve for me because I thought it would be something that would be my dream role. But actually, it wasn't the right fit for my personality. I didn't, um, I didn't enjoy the setup in terms of how, um, how I worked in the team, um, which was absolutely fine because it was, you know, it was an amazing experience. And what I did was I, I took that and I, I tried to understand what it was I liked and what it was I didn't like and went to use that to kind of move on to the next place and it was after that that I then started working purely in the space of um, trying to make the world a better place basically and, and working with brands and charities who are trying to make a difference in the world because it made me realise that you know sport, I love sport, it's always been a big affinity for me but actually what I found more passionate working around was when I did a bit of work with the Chelsea Foundation who is the charitable arm of Chelsea Football Club and it made me realise when I did a little bit of work with them that I was really passionate actually about making a difference in the world um, and sport has a really powerful way of doing that so I then uh, joined a startup agency called Revolt who they they essentially do what I've just described they work with brands to help them create positive change in the world and you can look them up at revoltlondon.com uh, I think it is um, but they're really interesting and um, I, I did some work that I joined as the you know a very near very nearly the start and um, when there's only a few employees and then we grew very quickly over two years and I was specifically responsible for um, our relationship with sports brands so I worked with Adidas a lot they were my main client and I worked with Adidas to um yeah to help them make a help them kind of position themselves so that they were making a positive impact in the world so I worked initially with Adidas Outdoor and um, to try and help get more people out into nature um, and then I did some work with some of the other areas of Adidas including um Adidas football and and some of the um some of the other kind of territories as well within Adidas and um, the work I did at Revolt was was really enjoyable and I just felt I felt uh, yeah I felt like I'd found something that I really loved um, in the sense that I was doing something that was making a difference in the world it was in sport and I was working with um, a lot of really interesting creative people at Revolt because Revolt is predominantly kind of a creative agency where you will build ideas for clients and you will, will give them ideas and strategy and and creative to show them that how they can embed their brand with um with more meaning and and actually creating an impact in the world rather than just selling a product so i really enjoyed that and um i had a really good um couple of years there and then it was recently this year that i um, went into freelancing and um for me, again, it was a case of understanding, you know, what was it about Revolt that I loved and what was it that I felt I needed from something else. That, that... And so it was, again, just part of that learning experience. And I realised that I wanted to to get back out into the world and, and manage, be, be my own boss and, and kind of go between different projects and and experience what that's like. And, and yeah, and so now I've been working with a few different brands and organisations. I'm working with a, a meditation organisation at the moment, which is a not-for-profit. So working with them on how they can kind of bring meditation to the world and how we can how we can bring meditation to as many people as possible to help them cope in in difficult times such as we find ourselves now and. I love working on different projects. I love the variety and, and I realised that freelancing where I can manage my own time and be flexible and move between projects was well suited for me. Um, I'm not one who needs, um, I don't need the security of, of knowing, uh, you know, knowing that I've got a permanent job. So therefore it was really well suited to me. But again, it was something that, you know, until you try it, you don't really know. Um, and you don't want to kind of feel restrained by a kind of fear of what if and um, put yourself out there go and try some things and um, so I'm just looking at, at some of the parts that I need to I need to tell you about to make sure I've covered everything off uh, that's suggested in this and um, I think the worst part of some of the jobs I've been in have perhaps um, perhaps where I found myself when you find yourself doing something you're passionate about you work hard which is great 
that's that's when you know you're into something because you find yourself naturally wanting to just do it and do it well and that's when you know you found something that is worth pursuing so don't give up on don't give up on on trying to find that because that's possible for everyone you know there is there are so many different things out there like keep going until you find something that speaks to you you know and once it does then pursue that and explore it and see what you like see what you don't like and keep going from there you know it's all a journey it's like don't don't worry about like i want to be this i want to be that it's just go for it go and explore see what happens um and uh, yeah but with that hard work can um sometimes you need to remember to balance it with your with your life and your social life and your downtime as well because that's very important and um, so that was a big part of um a big challenge i found at times is finding that work life balance um which is not always easy but you know if you're passionate about something it's also you know not necessarily a bad thing that you find yourself wanting to work um quite hard um the skills and attributes that are important for for what i do i i'd say that it's very much around kind of people management and um making sure you understand people and can and can kind of yeah understand their needs and and then work with them to identify what the project needs or what the brand needs um so i mean to be honest any job is all about people it's it's once you understand people and create that camaraderie and understanding with other people then you can work together to solve any problem and that's applicable across any job um so that that's always an important one it's just getting that understanding and connection with people you know what what are they afraid of what do they want you know understand that and you're fine because if you understand that from the founder of a company then you can you can help them and um, so you know whether you're a freelancer like me working with founders or clients directly or whether you're entering a big organization and you're you know a junior within a team that is then one part of the whole cog you've got people who who ultimately are you once you connect with them you can understand them whoever it is your line manager um you know their boss whoever it is like connect with them understand them and 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 use that as your platform to then grow um and yeah and i guess another key skill is problem solving which again i think just comes from communication i think communication underpins everything really like be super clear and honest and open like don't be afraid to talk to people and to ask them questions and to also just be vulnerable you know say to people like sorry i don't understand this or i just need a bit of help with this because i'm not experienced in this area i've done it so many times and you know people are very understanding like they, people don't expect you to know everything and if people treat you badly off the, the back of saying that then to be honest then they're not very nice people and you know if everyone's like that who you work with then you might not be working in the right place for you um but i think by far and away the best part of my job really is just the sense of fulfillment i get from knowing that i am helping to contribute to improving the world in some way on the projects that i work on and um, so right now with the case of this meditation organization if i can bring if i can help them bring meditation to more people and therefore more people are helping to cope with their um, anxiety and stress and depression better and off the back of that are able to live a more happy life where they're able to go out and do things that they might not have been able to because they found meditation as a really useful tool to help them um help them kind of uh, enjoy life then i mean there's nothing more satisfying than that for me that's that's really that's really it and you know in any project i work on it's now anyway it just needs to be about making sure that it's making a difference and um, because i think that's what the world needs and what the world calls for so if you're not sure what kind of job you're going for maybe instead think about an issue that you're passionate about you know and um, think about is it climate change is it um you know is it is it racial discrimination uh, is it homelessness uh, you know is it deforestation what issues are you passionate about 
go and see what's out there. Go and see what organisations, brands, charities are doing work to try and help tackle those and you'll find something that will fulfil you and that's uh, there's no greater satisfaction than that. Thanks, guys, and uh, yeah, enjoy. <laughs>